What is not for everyone, but society acts like it is. Hustle, grind, climb the corporate ladder culture. I just want to do what I'm good at and enjoy my life, not kill myself getting to the top. And also, kinda on the flip side, the idea that everyone should start their own business and be their own boss. Not everyone can, should, wants to. I think a lot of advice like that isn't sincere advice, it in excuses. Instead of saying, yeah, society has problems and we should think hard about them and address them. Too many people say, oh, just start your own business, as if that's universally possible and as if that would come close to working out if everyone tried it. See, now if you're not paid enough to get by, instead of addressing that head on, it's all your fault because you didn't start a successful business. The blame has been shifted to you. It's like when people say, housing costs too high, just move, as if that's a viable mass solution. Social media. Imagine being a 6th grader and having people think you're weird if you don't have an Instagram. That shit is poison, wrecked our interpersonal skills, ruined relationships, perpetuated bullying into cyberspace when it used to end at the school day, cemented embarrassment if you get recorded. The list goes on. I am glad social media wasn't a thing when I was in school. I was made fun of for being the fat girl, but at least it went away when I got home. Now kids get bullied 24 seven. It's horrible. Having children. I'm a woman who has never had that motherly urge and I never plan on having kids. People don't seem to understand that can happen. It's always, you'll change your mind once you find the right person. No, my right person will feel the same as me. People want to change me, but I've always felt this way. I'm married. Been married for 20 years. Someone at work asked me if I was married. I said yes. Do you have kids? Nope. What does your husband think about that? Well, if he wanted kids, he wouldn't be my husband. These people are wild LOL. Success in our modern way of thing about it. Not everyone wants or can handle being extremely wealthy, famous, or powerful. Some of us just want our slice of a good life and live it. Have you noticed how people who subscribe to this standard success thing are so aggressive about it? Like, they ask, what's your excuse for nor having the things they think are everyone's obligation to have or to die trying to have? Chill, my dude. The whole early bird gets the worm mentality. Society tends to glorify being a morning person and waking up at the crack of dawn, but not everyone's wired that way. Some of us are night owls who do our best work after midnight. So let's remember that not everyone thrives on the same schedule, and it's okay to be a night-loving creature in a world that often praises the early risers. After all, owls are pretty cool too. Also, our world really needs the late risers to function these days. I work an afternoon evening shift, so I go home late and tend to sleep late, at least in the eyes of the early birds of the world. But I can guarantee that if my store wasn't open after five or whatever, a lot of those same people would be in trouble. Marriage. I used to believe that marriage was a societal invention that really did not serve an important purpose. I decided at one point that I never wanted to get married. My views have evolved on this as I have aged. While I still believe that marriage, as an institution, is a societal invention, but it does serve an important purpose. It provides a default legal contract that defines the sharing of property and responsibilities. While this may sound trivial, it is not. This is particularly important for couples as they age, become sick, and die. It really defines how another person can make decisions on your behalf and benefit from a shared life. If you are to couple with another person, you should marry at some point. You really don't need to have a wedding or even tell anyone. Just do it for the sake of your partner. Waking up every day early in the morning and working an 8 to 12 hour day. I recently started reading about sleep and how there are three categories of the body's preferred sleep cycle, and a huge majority of the population actually aren't designed for the kind of life we are forced into by modern standards. There is also some recent study done into our standard of going to sleep and then waking up in one shot. 
Lots of historic documents mentioned a first sleep and a second sleep, and research has uncovered that we used to sleep with the sunset, and we would wake up around midnight. People would often light some candles, read, do some mindless chores, perform marital obligations, and then, after an hour or two, go back to sleep until sunrise. These studies seem to show that given the opportunity and without artificial light, people actually revert pretty quickly back to dual phase sleep. What's really wild to me about this is that it was completely forgotten and not mentioned until recently. The idea that in order to be part of this world, you have to focus on events that don't concern you. We're expected to be aware of conflicts all over the world, poverty, crime, social problems, and all other kinds of horrible things that happen daily, but don't concern us. This leads to constant panic and stress, caused by events and situations that aren't in our sphere of influence, but we're expected to be aware of them. There's almost no way to live a stable life when we're constantly battered over the head with events happening in other parts of the world. But if we ignore them, we're horrible people. A 9-5 job, I'm a bartender, server, and a natural night owl. I honestly think that's why I even prefer the service industry, because I just feel more normal at night, lol. I have my degree and did the 9-5 for about two years, but everyone's energy all day kind of makes me nauseous. But the relentless judgment for being on a different schedule than the rest of society is constant. Desk jobs. All through school, they preached that we were failures if we were anything less than doctors, lawyers, middle management, etc. So we all trained for those things and did really well. Now there aren't enough jobs to go around in those fields. Now it's just, your degrees are useless. Go work fast food. You failed. Really getting tired of the out of touch 50 plus crowd ruining people's lives. Drinking. It's everywhere and tied to so many social activities. Commercials for alcohol everywhere. Boozy morning talk shows. Vacations and cruises centered all around alcohol. Every sporting event ever. Even movie theaters. A friend of mine recently went to rehab and have cut back personally to be supportive and my god. To be a recovering alcoholic these days must be rough. Everywhere is a constant reminder. Christmas. I really don't like Christmas, but people look at me like I have two heads if I say that out loud. Like I'm not allowed to not like Christmas. Not a religious reason. I just find the holiday to be too intrusive. It insists upon itself. And everywhere you turn, Christmas gets jammed in your face, down your throat, up your butt. It's October 29th and my neighbor just put his Christmas lights up. They won't come down until the end of June. Is eight months of Christmas really necessary? Driving. Maneuvering thousands of pounds of metal at speeds that can easily kill you and other people. Yet we encourage people to do it before they can vote or drink or live alone. And at least in North America you're seen as some sort of immature freak if you can't or don't want to. And settling down with a romantic relationship and kids as your main if not only source of socialization and support. We're animals that are supposed to live in groups, but for adults, we force the nuclear family as that on everyone. I'm in my 30s now, and so miss hanging out with my friends all the time, but over the pandemic, most of them hold themselves away with their partner and never want to socialize with anyone else. I wish there were more options for adults to live in communities with lots of friends and extended families, but that's limited basically to college and seniors' homes. Marriage been with my partner 12 years now and we're super happy with our lives. Don't want kids so no reason to get married and no tax breaks or the like would apply to us. The way I see it, if it weren't for all the history and culture and tradition that I don't care about, marriage is just getting the government involved to make it harder for one of us to leave. Neither of us have any legal or financial obligation to stay together. Every morning we wake up and choose to stay in this relationship because it works and we love each other. If he wants out, I don't ever want him to stay because of some obligation or vows. If he wants out, then I don't want him to stay, and vice versa. What's more romantic than us each being entirely free to leave whenever we want, but for 12 years, we never have. For many more, I feel secure that neither of us ever will. Love going to other people's weddings, but don't fancy giving myself an expensive project to run for a year plus, so I don't want a wedding either, to be honest. 
each to their own. But I'd love for people to stop asking us when we're getting married, or for people to imply he doesn't love me if he hasn't bought me a ring. A relationship, to be honest, I am in a relationship and am very happy in it, but growing up it was always dehumanizing to hear people talk about how it was sad if you didn't have a partner, how sad life must be, or being teased about going to flirt with guys. Relationships aren't for everyone, honestly. Again, I'm beyond happy in mine, but for people that are single, they might just prefer that solitude in life. Becoming a famous person Especially with the rise in social media and platforms to express our talent. It's basically recycling of talent, keeping up with trends and copying others. Most of us are not patient or smart enough to deal with being stalked by fans and media. You will get fame and money at the cost of your privacy. Being a morning person. You are seen as potentially a little lazy, unmotivated, depressed, etc. for staying up late and not wanting to get up early. People always told me that I would grow out of it and they were the same when they were younger. Well, I'm in my 30s and still hate being awake before 8am. It's just literally how my body clock is and always has been. Buying a house. A lot of people see that mortgage payments are around the same as rents in the area and assume it's a good idea. They don't take into consideration maintenance costs, insurance, property tax, etc. It is generally a good investment, but it's a commitment. Gym training. It's so popular as it's a lucrative business and easy to sell with images of pumped up bodies. But for a sport to be sustainable, you'll want to find one you actually like. The 80 and 90 year old grannies and geezers around where I live were never gym rats. But they've moved a lot by walking, riding bicycles and skiing. Some of us may be built to enjoy sweating indoors. Others are hardwired to expect the scenery to change when putting in some effort. In addition, we're simply built different in the physical sense too. Too, making gym training massively more rewarding for some. If you look at the people doing long distances in endurance sports, you're looking at a collection of endurance specific characteristics, a high proportion of slow twitch muscles, biomechanics that emphasize a lot of motion instead of strength delivered, etc. No sense in forcing these people to try to gain lots of muscle. Just as there's no sense in forcing a top-level shot putter or power lifter to do huge amounts of cardio. Most things, in my experience, you're expected to work 40 plus hours on a wage that isn't sustainable. So you end up working multiple jobs up to 80 hours a week. So you can afford the internet, television services, electricity, food, and water. All of which you barely have time to use because you're always at work. Social media. You get called out and told that you're weird because you don't have it. Same for constant connectivity. People find it odd that you decide to silence your phone because you simply don't really care if they enjoyed a specific video or TikTok or what their political views are. 24-7. Credit. You're supposed to create it and spend years cultivating it until that moment you really need it. And because you did, it's now plummeted off a cliff and you can't do anything about it except pay more for using it. Oh, and without it, you'd be lucky to have anything. College education. People who have skipped this step and gone a different route. Trades, experience, in my opinion, make fee far more money than those of us who did it. Television. I don't have one haven't for over two years. You'd be shocked at the number of people who find this out and freak out for me like it's the worst thing in the world. I've had people I don't know approach me because they overheard me tell someone I do know that I don't have one and have felt sorry for me and were willing to offer me a spare TV they have for free. Or on a date, they ask me my favorite current TV show and I can't answer because I don't watch it and they're so horrified that they offered to get me one. When I say that I'm happier without one, they immediately don't want a second date because I'm too weird. I'm in my 40s, have no kids, and don't want any. I have three professional client-facing jobs, and I have blue hair. Not having a TV is an unforgivable sin. There are so many. A family. My family doesn't play a big role in my life, and I don't plan to have a family of my own. Never liked kids, never wanted a big house with a big garden so my kids could play in it. 
I don't want any of that, and especially as a woman, I'm constantly told that I will change my mind later, since women are so emotional, and seeing others have kids will make me want to have them too. No, I want to be successful, I want to study, and I want to work as something I like. I want to make enough money so I don't have to worry about it, and I want to do all of this on my own. I want to be free to decide who I am and what I want to do. This is not the freaking stone age where women have to have children so that humans survive. I'm not a hormone driven birth giving whatever. I am a person. Why is that so hard to understand? The internet. I forget where I read it, but it was in reaction I think to some Q poster. The comment was, universal internet access was a mistake. Made me laugh out loud, but it's true. Conspiracy theories have been running rampant. We have a serious mass delusion problem. Romance. I'm a teenage girl, and yes I do like reading or watching romance occasionally, but the way a show cannot exist without a woman ending up in a romantic relationship is ridiculous. I get that it's an interesting topic that many people like to read or watch and also almost everyone will experience a romantic crush at some point in their life so they can relate but oh my god what I would do for one show to just not have any romance in it. Especially shows that are marketed towards girls. When I was 13 falling in love felt like the most important thing in the world and everything agreed and couldn't wait to get a crush. And we were all reading the same toxic girl books that promoted getting a boyfriend at 12. And it was horrible. I don't think romance is a bad thing at all, but there are people who don't experience it or don't have romance as a priority in their life. And that should be socially accepted. Being neurotypical. The world is designed for what we consider as neurotypical people. The fact is that many of us are neurodivergent and have trouble conforming to every social norm. Is it logical it is this way? Yes. Would I like to see it different? Yes. Owning a home, it was marketed as the American dream. And for the fortunate few I know who were able to buy one in the last few years, they've been bogged down by exorbitant and inflated repair costs. Now I know maintenance is normal on a home, but as someone who had considered plopping down my entire nest egg for a down payment to stop renting, seeing what they've gone through secondhand has made me reconsider. I've a very stressful job and the last thing I could handle is not having someone to call if something needs fixing. I know I pay too much in rent, but for an equivalent quality of living in something I own would be three times as much in monthly mortgage payments. Plus, I would have no nest egg anymore. Wild times. Socializing in general. Everyone acts like it's so easy to meet new people and make friends. In reality, Unless you're going to the bar a bunch and extremely extroverted, it's hard to make friends. Most of us are so busy with work, chalk, school, chores at home and appointments and not alcoholics that it's really hard to find time to socialize and make new friends. I'm 22 and I only have one friend. I met her at a job though and we barely talk, hang out. So does it even really count? I haven't met a single person outside of work in my adult life. I do live in a pretty small town with no activities though, so maybe it's a small town problem. Monogamy. I'm not into polyamory myself, but I don't think it's the worst thing in the world. I know polyamory is controversial on Reddit, but I think some people need to explore that before settling down and getting married. Obviously, if you're the type who gets the thrill from cheating, that can happen in a polyamorous relationship. However, I think some people just aren't wired to have one partner. College, marriage, kids, figuring things out by 22. College isn't for everyone, and many are better off waiting to go or not go. So many careers are losing the requirement of specific degrees and are much more interested in experience. Marriage is hard, and literally nobody explains it well, nor really can they. Kids are amazing and wonderful, and watching yours grow is beautiful. But this is not for everyone. Do not have kids if you aren't ready. Do not have kids if your only reason is religion. Just don't. Yep, 22 is in fact a terrible age at which to have things figured out by. Like, almost everybody's path is going to diverge from that ideal. 
And if you think you should have things figured out by then, or worse, if you have all the plans set in, what you think is stone. You're just setting yourself up for various kinds of misery, doubt, and even despair. Good to have some ideas, even good to have a five-year plan. But kids by 24, home ownership by 28, or ace med school and practice in specific place in specialty. That way lies almost certain failure, and worse, heaps of self-blame. Cooking. Historically, very few people cooked for themselves regularly. They lived communally where food was cooked communally, in long houses, castles, religious monasteries, military and work camps, and later in boarding homes. People would also eat in taverns and inns. The idea that everyone should be able to plan meals, source ingredients, and make delicious, nutritious food is really a modern invention. Going out on Friday night after work, having friends, circle of friends, drinking, being in relationships, behaving according to your perceived or personal gender, for example. Someone who is female and dresses in feminine manner should also act like a lady. Watching sports. It's funny to me how people care so much about it. People say we when talking about their favorite team and get upset or sad when their team losses as if they could win every game. Like I get enjoying watching people who are talented at something, but it's a way of life for some people, and so many people connect on sports enjoyment. I always feel like an outsider when people discussing it. It'd be one thing if it was just a niche topic, but it's just everywhere and people assume I'm into it too. How is kids not the top comment? From simply observing my siblings when we lived as a joint family, kids are a lot of work. And so many people think that people who are sure of not having kids are going to regret it when they're 65 and alone, etc. And should have kids. I, 27, was talking to one of my siblings, who is 14 years older than me, about how I'm starting a HR certification via a small student loan to help get a CPHR designation and a better job. Her response was, when are you guys husband and me planning to have kids, one year, two years? If it's more than two years from now, a student loan sounds fine. If less than, focus on finances for the kid. And it was so off-putting because I've actually finally figured out what interests me in the corporate world and was thinking that my family's response would be something along the lines of, good for you, just wait till she finds out that I don't plan on kids for at least four or five years from now because my husband is starting a Bachelor of Computer Science degree so we can have better finances for our future, which dues include a baby, but just not when we aren't financially stable enough. This brings me to my next pain point about kids that society has painted an inaccurate picture about. You'll never be financially ready enough, so just do it and you'll figure it out. Garbage advice. Not saying that people need to become the top 1% type of wealthy to have kids. But if you're worried about rent or mortgage, have a lot of debt, not a good enough job that is guaranteed to survive this economy and the inevitable crash, or any one of the above, then you really shouldn't be having kids unless you have a very reliable contingency plan to help you out of these types of issues.